Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut, and in this video what I'm going to be doing is taking a look at this new Linux distribution called GingOS. Now they say that they're the first, well the world's first iPad OS style Linux distribution, and as far as I know this is really the only one that I can think of that is solely focused on creating a touch-based system. We're actually gonna be uh, taking a look at this. They just released a preview version of the ISO this morning, um, as of when I'm recording this. And we're gonna go ahead and jump on in, but before we're just gonna do a quick skim through the homepage. Mobile first, well-designed, it's iPadOS-like. Multi-touch touch gestures, beautifully designed, and so far it's only compatible with the Surface Pro 6 and the Matebook 14. They'll probably, it'll probably work fine with other things. I'm gonna be using it in VirtualBox, so I won't be able to actually demonstrate some of the uh, touch gestures. Uh, supposedly it comes with some of their native apps, so we'll definitely be taking a look at that. And it is a fully functional Linux system, so it can run full desktop apps. And this is a desktop, so I can't really show you this either, but it has a touchpad gesture support. Um, let's go ahead and jump on into VirtualBox. Uh, I didn't do anything, I didn't install it or anything yet, so we're going to see all that together. You can see my cursor here, this is just kind of like the dot as if it were my finger. But we're going to go ahead and swipe up and enter a pin. Uh, on the form post, when they published this, it said the default pin is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we are greeted with a welcome to Jing OS. Uh, basically, they want to collect some information, so I'm not... Too much of a fan of that, but um, it is a new distribution and they're trying to build it, so they probably need to know what's going on. Before I agree to that, we can see up here there's a little, uh, oh, looks like I need to slide it down. Okay, that's cool. Here, I'm going to move myself so you guys can kind of see what's going on. If I uh, touch and slide down, I bring out the uh, Wi-Fi controller, ringer, brightness controller, a few other things here linked to settings, but we're going to look at that later. If I go ahead and drag down from the sound, oh, it's the same thing, the ringer and all that. So let's just go ahead and agree to this and see what the installation process looks like. Ooh, I am the 219th user. That's honestly a higher number than I thought it was. There's a lot of people interested in this. This just was released not that long ago. So let's get started, and looks like we don't really need to install it, or this might be just like the live disk. Um, but they have WPS 2019 installed. Uh, they have the Chromium web browser, photos. Uh, what's down here? We have, that's probably settings. That's probably their app store. Let's go into settings here and see if we can actually get some information on the system. Ah, this is a KDE, KDE Plasma. Jing OS Unstable, they're running the 5.4 kernel. I'm not too certain, maybe I just slide up. Oh, there we go. Let's uh, open up the terminal real quick. Everything opens up in full screen because this is assuming that you're on like a tablet computer. So NeoFetch has been installed. We'll run that again real quick. And we can see that we are for sure running Plasma, KWIN Plasma. So this is really just a highly edited version of Plasma by the looks of it, uh, Jing OS Preview Edition. So let's go back and I'm just trying to slide around. Oh, okay, so let's slide to the next page. And yeah, this is kind of giving away more of the uh, KDE stuff, which I love KDE and it's really interesting how they went about doing this. iBus Preferences, Install System, so that's the actual installation. We will run that through that real quick in just a sec. That's really all they have on this system, it looks like. Um, a clock. The WPS stuff that we saw earlier. M at PV Media Player. I'm not familiar with that one. Photos. Let's see their Photos app and see if they already have anything on here. So just a little preview video. Looks like the background right here. And you can see the gestures. We just slide to check everything out. This would be really, really nice on an actual, uh, like a small tablet. Still not my preference, but it would be nice. But you've seen me slide this down and check this stuff out, turn on Bluetooth, all the stuff you'd expect on a mobile device. Uh, let's see if there's anything with time. Okay, so if you pull down near where the actual time clock is, it brings down your notification center. Let's go ahead and install the system. Let's see how, how they want us to do this. There we go. 
So I went ahead and actually restarted the system because the uh, actual installer crashed it. But like we saw that this is a preview release, it uh, the things aren't going to work, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, discover updates are available. Well, that's a weird way to come up. None of this stuff really worked. This, this is definitely only a preview release. You're not going to be doing any type of work in this. Uh, let's open up this MPV media player. See if it actually opens up here. Because this is the same kind of screen I got on the uh, installer. Um, Alright, so I went ahead and restarted. Let's go ahead and jump over to Firefox one more time. This is the actual... Um, form post for the release. This is version 0.6 and uh, doesn't have the files application that I was just looking for. Uh, it says the features of this include the uh, desktop, lock screen, control center. You can use Discover which is KDE App Store and it includes their tablet apps of photos which we saw, voice memos, media player which didn't open, uh, calendar and calculator, Touchpad gestures, world class, uh, single instance. So yeah, it's not going to install. Um, touch driver optimized and system language only supports English. Um, and then we have the app list here, which we saw all that earlier. Well, as we were kind of scrolling through, KDE system settings, terminal camera, file manager. That file manager is Dolphin. A WPS Office, Chromium browser, and then their specific uh, Jing applications. Let's jump over and check out the ones that we didn't take a look at real quick. So let's swipe up. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm, I'm liking the idea of this. This would be really, if everything worked perfect and it had everything, and this was on a uh, touch-based machine, this is a great alternative to, uh, this would be a great alternative to iOS. Uh, so photos, maybe this media player, maybe I just, tried one that wasn't going to work. Okay, so this one's working. This is good. Um, so we have a search functionality, uh, like, lately. Um, let's play this. Hopefully it doesn't play loud. It's laggy because it's on a virtual machine. But I do like how they have everything laid out here with the uh, how this works. Be very, very intuitive. Uh, we're not going to run through this video. You could download it and check out this uh, video if you'd like to. Uh, pause play functionality. If I swipe from any direction, nothing really happens. Uh, just tap this to go back and get back onto our desktop. So this MPV media player wasn't working well, but the year their media player works well. Um, their calendar supposedly works. So it does. I love the animations that it provides. Um, let's make a mock event. So let's say we were going to uh, go to the doctor's. And we're going to do this. I, I really do like this application here. Or how they have the applications that are working thus far laid out. Let's say this is at 430. Check. See what that looks like, doctors. This looks just like the uh, Apple calendar. How Apple has theirs set up. So that's cool. Um, calculator. And this... <laughs> I really hope it's not like that one distribution I checked out, the uh, Linux F FX, where it's a complete ripoff. I really hope they're a little bit unique with it, with the same uh, iOS inspiration, but they don't go full board and just make a direct ripoff of the iPad. What else was there? Voice memos? This isn't probably going to work. See, this looks better than the uh, the Apple Apple version. We have the naming here. We can play our voice memos. We can record voice memo. It's probably not going to hook up with my microphone properly. So we're not going to actually do that. But you just hit play and it plays through whatever these are. Uh, back. And then let's check out their uh, clock application. Let's see if they have an alarm clock built into it. That'd be cool. Uh, ooh, they do add an alarm. Then no repeat label. So the, what they do have working seems like it's going to actually work really, really good. Especially if they get it working on more systems other than those two laptops that I mentioned earlier. Like they mentioned, this is just a preview release, but I am really looking forward to how this project is going to progress. 
Um, you can download it here. I'll have this linked in the description so you could go ahead and actually download this. They do require that you give an email if you do want the preview edition. Uh, that's completely at your discretion. Um, it has a little guide on how to install it on the actual Surface, uh, Surface Pro. Um, how to experience on a virtual machine, that's what we did. And this is where you get all the information like the default uh, passwords and pins and all that. So there'll be a link to this in the description if you want to go ahead and try it out. Like I said, I'm really excited to see what they actually do in the future. Um, right here, it looks like they have a link to their roadmap. So uh, that's one way to get to it once you go through the link that I uh, will put in the description. You could check all this out. What we just looked at was the preview for the one, uh, well, 0 0.6 version. It says right here on March 31st, 2021, they're gonna be releasing the actual Jing App Store, their settings, their file managers and all that. So instead of just kind of pulling KDE stuff. So that's gonna be interesting to see how that all looks, at least in their little preview here. If I go back to the, uh, the Jing OS website, Jing OS, boom, right there. Um, it looks really, really good how they have everything laid out. It kind of reminds me of some of the uh, UK UI theming, the UK UI desktop environment. That's a really good one. It's also a Chinese one. This is a Chinese project, as you probably could tell by some of the uh, Mandarin you've seen um, here and there. But that basically concludes this video. I just wanted to take a quick look at this, see what worked, see what didn't, and see if this is actually going in a uh, decent direction. That actually makes me look forward to the development. And so far, based on this being their very first preview release that was put out today, um, I'm excited. But overall, that will conclude this video. I do hope you have a beautiful day. Uh, thank you to my Patreon subscribers for supporting my content. If you would like to become a Patreon, there'll be a link in the description. If not, that is more than fine. Liking this video, subscribing, and leaving a comment telling me what you think about Jing OS would be more than enough. I hope you have a beautiful day, and goodbye.